Imagine a world without men. Just imagine a world where there were no men. I can almost hear somebody say, freedom! <laughs> At least no heartbreak, no complications, nothing like that. <laughs> but as a filmmaker, I get to see the world through stories. And that's how I make sense of the world. And um, that's frankly how I think we all connect with each other, you know, through the premise of our individual stories. And so growing up, I had a lot of questions. I'm a very curious mind. I think a whole lot. And so I had so many questions about myself and all of that. And I didn't have the opportunity of having a masculine role model, a father figure and all of that. And so I was dependent on the love of my mother. My mother loved me unconditionally, and she still does. She's the best mother in the world. We all say that, but I need it more than all of you. She taught me to be kind, to be generous, to be loving, to be caring, and to just have empathy for human beings, for other people. And I think I fared pretty well with some of these traits, you know, but I had deep-seated questions still because I was very sporty. I still am very sporty. I'm very energetic. I'm very um, outgoing. I'm, I take initiatives. I often would, would take leadership responsibilities. And some of the steps that I would take would be met with adversarial circumstances and here and there. And I tried to talk to my mother about these things, but she tried the best she, she could to help me understand what I was going through. But there were still some things I just couldn't get answers to. Because it was realized that while some elements of masculine traits exist in women, I observe that it is predominantly in men. You may argue, but, you know. So I, like every other young person, I experimented with all kinds of things, relationships with difficult choices, with different kinds of choices. And when I did that, in some cases I fared well, but in other cases I got burnt really badly. I got really burnt really badly. Then in retrospect, I realized that I wasn't the only one getting burnt. There were so many other young people who were getting burnt as well. Now, there's a narrative that seems to suggest that masculinity is toxic. And the notion seems to portray men as suppressing women's rights. And so the solution seems to be for the effeminization of men. Teach men to be more in tune with their emotions. Teach men to be more caring, more loving, more appealing, more empathic, more sympathetic, and all of that. Now, don't get me wrong. These traits are what every human being should possess. These are laudable traits. These are things that makes us human. The fact that we're able to care for one another, love unconditionally, and all of that. But it almost seems as though we're tilting to an extreme which seems to portray, negatively portray the masculine traits as assertiveness, as, you know, taking leadership responsibilities, you know, risk taking and all of that seem as if they are negative. But you must realize that these attributes were what makes men able to take leadership roles and also defend. Now, as Africans that we are, if you go through our history as Africans, we've had to engage in so many wars and conflicts all through our history, from tribal wars, you look at the Indice uh, rebellion battle, to the Adubi wars, to the Bende on and um, Bendo Nisha hinterland expedition to the Ekumeku movement to the Oyorile. These wars were fought by people who were, who were trying to whisk away the encroachment of the colonial masters. So they fought to defend their territory. Some fought to take over territory, to expand the territory. Some fought to defend the people they love and they cared about. Just imagine with me for a second if there were no men to fight these wars. Think about it. This land would probably would have been taken over by foreigners and people would have suffered a whole lot more. Or women would have had to take on more roles from being mothers and also being fighters. Something we've had to see a whole lot today with single mothers who have had to take on much more, but much more roles than probably can handle sometimes. Now, don't get me wrong. I applaud every single mother. I think single mothers are heroes. It takes tremendous level of strength to be able to take care of a human being or more than one human being while also being yourself and being an individual as well. But you must realize that the family remains the, the first point of call for every child. Children get their sense of identity and ident the sense, uh, their sense of worth, their sense of 
understanding how the world works or interacting with the world through the family. And so it's becoming quite challenging in a way when there are families where there's only one parent and there's the absence of a masculine voice to lead, to reprove, or to correct. Now, Sarah McLanaha, a prominent sociologist who is very known for her landmark study called the Fragile Families and Children Wellbeing Study, where she followed the lives of over 5,000 children born into single parent homes for over 20 years. Now, she came to a conclusion with Daniel Schneider, who happened to also be a professor of um, social policy in Harvard and Kennedy School. They both came to conclude that they find father absence to negatively impact children's social and emotional development. Researchers even go on to affirm that father absence causes psychosomatic illnesses in children. A UNICEF 2007 report also went along this line as well from investigating so many families. They came up with the narrative that children born into single parent homes more often than not ran low in social and emotional development. This was a very confirmed study. So personally, I set up our, our forum called Heroes with the intention to assemble young men and expose them to avenues and opportunities for them to gain, gain mentorship and to have masculine role models to look up to. And we saw incredible changes in the lives of young men who were able to just have someone to look up to. Now, if young people have an innate desire to have a role model, someone they can actually look up to. And this is very, this is very well confirmed because like somebody once said one time, children are like mirrors. They reflect whatever is placed in front of them. And so when a strong masculine presence is what is placed in front of them, that's what they model because they are taught how to be able to persevere in the midst of challenges and still go after your dreams. Because every time you face or you, are, you make up your mind to go and chase your dream, you will definitely be faced with adversities. And that's what they are taught by this model. And so uh, that leads me to a story of a young man called Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter uh, was, is, is actually a, a, a famous um, baseball player. But when he was a little boy, in the documentary titled The Captain, in that documentary, there was a particular scene where the young Derek happened to be learning how to play the baseball and he was making so many mistakes. He was almost getting depressed, getting frustrated from trying to hit, make the hit, but he just couldn't make the hit. And so he became almost depressed. So he picked up his phone and called home. And his mother picked up the call and then she said, and while they were talking, Derek was just bemoaning how frustrated he was. He was just accounting how difficult everything was becoming for him. And he was almost at the verge of giving up. So while they were talking, his mother felt the compassion that only a mother understands when she sees a child hurting. Because no mother, no mother really wants to see her child suffer. So she said, baby, why don't you come home? And the dad was, listening, was doing something else. And then somehow he happened to hear that. Then he immediately interjected and said, don't tell him that. Don't let him know that coming home is an, op is an option. He was letting him know that he would not have to turn his back simply because a dream was difficult to achieve. So he was telling the young man that it would cost him having to pull through and push harder and train harder to get what he was looking forward to achieving. Now imagine again if his dad was not around. <laughs> Derek, Derek Jetter probably would never have become a five-time World Series champion who has made over 3,000 hits and has won five golden gloves and several other accolades simply because somebody told him, keep going. So here is me saying to you that the problem we have is not the toxicity of masculinity, rather the absence of masculinity. And so I employ every father in this place today, be present in the lives of your children, provide them the guidance they need, the mentorship they need, for them to become who they want to be. And then for, if you're a single mother here as well, let me let you understand that a man may not have made a good partner, it doesn't mean he can't be a good father. And so every child needs access to their father. And where it is not possible, expose them to an environment where they can get mentorship from male communities that are healthy and safe enough for your child to become who they want to be. And also let's celebrate our boys for being masculine and let's stop making them feel ashamed of being masculine and let's also create healthy communities where young 
men can thrive. In so doing, we'll build a society that is healthy and safe for everyone to dream and to see their dream become reality. Thank you.